The demo you are about to see was recorded on September 28, 2016. If you have any questions or need any information, send us an email at info at welldatabase.com. We've broken up into a few spaces here, so we'll go over those real quick. On the left-hand side, we have the mapping uh, tool, which allows you to see and interact with the map. On the right-hand side, we have the analytics. So these two will interact with each other as you're dealing with a well database, and you'll see that here as we go through our demo. You can hide away the analytics if you're on a laptop, and so you don't have a lot of screen real estate. You just click the analytics button in the top right. It'll hide away, give you a full screen map. Uh, for the purposes of this demo, we'll keep the analytics up because it does interact, and it's very good to see. There's also a list option that will give you a listing of all the wells uh, in your current search. Uh, we'll hide that away for now. We'll open it back up when we have a little bit more uh, refined search and what we're looking for. On the map side, you have two dockable panels. So again, it's uh, trying to we're trying to be efficient with our screen real estate. Don't want to take up more space than we need to, so they both dock to the side. On the left hand side, we have our filters. So the pretty straightforward filters, uh, what you would see in a lot of oil and gas data sites. Uh, each group is collapsible, so that you can kind of uh, hide and show the ones that are of most interest to you. Starting at the top. We're able to save filters, so when we create a set, we can save it, and then we can recall those. Uh, uh, this right-hand button will allow us to share this as well. Now, the share is very interesting because it creates a link that you can send to anybody, and even a user who does not have a Well Database account can open this search and view the data on the map. They won't be able to get to the details of the analytics, but you can share this search with anybody. Coming down the uh, filters pane, we'll look. We have the depth API operators, uh, standard stuff. Open up the geographic section. You can draw an area of interest. Uh, I should point out that our default area of interest is the map bounds, which means what you see on your map will be reflected on what you see on the analytics. Now you can change that so that that is not the case. You can choose none. Uh, but as you'll see in our demo, it's very useful that the well and the, the analytics and the map match. Uh, you can search by land grid, counties, states. Uh, under production, you can search by the formations or any of the cumulative production numbers. Event dates to permit spud, first production and plug dates. Uh, the frac data, our data come, we pull in frac focus data and you will find uh, searching by profit mass, service companies, materials, fluid systems, any of those. And then the last um, search that's built in is the available data. And with so much historical data in Well Database, uh, sometimes you want to weed out some of those. So if you want to search for only wells that have production or only wells that have formations, you can easily check that box and weed out some of the data that you're not interested in. The very last thing you have is the user data field. And those are user-defined properties that you can assign to the well. I'll show you those as we get into a well details, and that we'll use this filter here in a second. Uh, so you click on filters to hide it back to the side again. Um, and on the right-hand side, we have another dockable tool, uh, and this is the map tools. So up top here, you can print your map. You can find your location if you're on a, a laptop that has a GPS, and you can uh, plot a location if you have a Latin long settings you want to put on there. We're built on top of Google Maps, so it's a very familiar interface, but your base maps you can choose from a terrain, road map, satellite, or hybrid, all from the Google Maps base layers. Uh, you can also choose no base map. That will come in handy if you have multiple map overlays that you're working with and you just don't want the noise of the Google backgrounds. Under map overlays here, if you hit the plus button, you'll see that you can load any of your own shape files. You can load Z maps if you've created property maps. You want to drop them right in Well Database, you can do that. If you want to connect to a WMS or KML layer, you can do that as well. And at the very top, we have WDB overlay, so the Well Database overlays that are built in. If you open that up, you'll see it's uh, basic stuff from state, counties, abstract, section, township, range, the shale plays, basins, faults, pipelines. So it's a nice amount of uh, filters built, uh, layers built in. So uh, we'll go ahead and check counties here because it'll become relevant very quickly. Uh, as you see, it shows up very quick. Everything in Well Database is optimized for speed and, and responsiveness. So you'll notice that through the demo that everything responds very quickly. Uh, the animate feature is actually very useful if you're looking to animate, uh, say, permit date. It'll give you an option of selecting two periods, and you'll be able to watch wells show up as permits are filed. It's great to do if you're trying to monitor activity. 
Uh, and underneath that, you have the well layer settings. Right now, it's set to well spots by default. Down at the bottom, you can set a heat map, which will allow you to heat map on anything from cumulative oil, gas, water, heat map, uh, the total wells, and the total depth. And you can do the same properties on the bubble map. And then the colorized groups will allow you to choose a property that will color the well so that you can, uh, you can then interact with the analytics. So we'll get to that very quickly as well. So that's the map tools, and we can dock that away. Uh, the current setting with the well spots gives you standard well icons that you can see, but we also create clusters, and we do this because we have so many wells in our system. We want to be able to uh, give you an image of all of them at once. These clusters are size and color coded so that you can spot trends as you zoom in and move around the map. Uh, we'll look at that right now. So uh, at the top layer, on the map, the wells are clustered by state. So if I click North Dakota, it gives me that, Texas, and Mexico, so on. Uh, if I click Zoom 2, it's going to drop me straight to the middle of the state. and It doesn't actually zoom to the extents of the state. It just drops you straight to the middle so you can see as the, as the spots break apart. Uh, from here, they'll go from state and break out to the county. Now, we already laid in the county overlay, so we see that the well spots fall in nicely into the middle of each of these counties. If you click on any one, it will give you the county name and the number of wells in that county that we have. If you, uh, We'll come up back to the tools and we'll come and add the shell plays layer so that we can go ahead and spot and we'll jump over to the Eagleford uh, where we can check out some information. So as we move over, um, one thing you might see here as I refresh. Uh, as we zoom in here to our site here, we see the uh, overview page will update. So this is what I was talking about. Our map and our analytics will uh, interact with each other. So as I zoom in, uh, we're still over the 200,000 results limit, but uh, it'll interact with this. So let's go ahead and just pick LaSalle County and zoom into there. So as we do, we'll get the map refreshing, and we'll get the analytics that refresh with it. So now our overview shows that we have 602 wells. Now these are the wells that we see on our map. So that's, again, when I talked about the filter of the map, that's what I mean by that. Uh, you get some basic information about the average TD, some elevations, the oil, the water, the GORs, BOEs. So uh, some nice basic information as you're zooming in. And you'll see at the bottom that production comparison will show up when you get under 500 wells. We do this because even at 500 wells, the production data for all of them can get really messy. So we'll go ahead and zoom in one more level just to see how this interacts with us. Um, and so now we're down to 308 wells, again, the same overview information, but then now we have our production information for all the wells in our view. So given that our production data is has all the full historical record and we go back well into the 50s and even older, you've got a lot of old data and, and the chart is really difficult to read. So to circumvent that, we'll come over to our filters and we'll apply our first one. We'll come down to the first production date and we'll go ahead and drop, uh, you know, 2011. It'll give us a little over uh, five years of production history here. And our chart should be much more simpler. Okay, so there we go. Um, so now you can look in and you can go to any one of these. You can hover over them and look at the wells, the amount. Um, but then you can also come over here and interact with the map. So now with the map, we'll click on this well with the Hickson Carden 3H. So you can click on any well. They'll tell you the name, the API, what type of well it is. You can also decide to watch this well from right here, which uh, watching wells will put it on your My Wells list. It'll send you emails if there are any updates on the wells, and it makes a, a quick search for the filter. Uh, we'll open up the well details here to kind of show you what our well details look like. So the well details screen is on every well that we have. Now the data and the tabs on the screen will vary from state to state based off of the data they make available. In general, you will always see general production and files tabs on every, uh, every well you open. The general tab, basic information with well name, API fields, some of the dates, uh, the depths, the bottom hole locations, lateral links. So again, very general information. If I click on the production data, then we're going to get uh, the production chart. So I should take this time to note that our production data is pulled from every state over the entire country and into Canada. 
And uh, in Texas, as we are all probably very aware, that they report w uh, production by lease. And so we use a combination of the, the lease, the test data, the allowable data, and we generate generate a prorated amount that we put in place and on every well we show you the lease production so this is the lease gas production and then down below you'll see the allocated gas production you'll see the same thing for oil here the oil production and the allocated oil production so we use a combination of the tests and the allowables because it gives us the most flexibility so when a well gets taken offline and an allowable is changed we can update the prorated amount to reflect that so we're trying to show you more of a realistic picture of what a well is really doing uh, moving across we have permits and completions um, a lot of technical data in Texas it's very nice test data everything from lifting methods and choke size pressures uh, the frac data from frac focus we do a little bit of uh, analysis with clay controls and acid treatments we produce all the uh, frac ingredients here and you know, on and on so you can dig into this and see all the details that we have to bring I'll jump over to the file side though and show you that we do grab the files, everything from the permits to the completions, um, and then we'll grab logs where available. Uh, every file in Well Database is open to the you. If you are a premium user, you'll have access to everyone. There's unlimited downloads uh, and no real usage restrictions on them. So feel free to download them, use them in your products however you see fit. Uh, you'll see two buttons by each file. And what the one is a download that will download it straight to your machine. And the other one is a viewer. So this, if I click this button, it will open it in a viewer. Now this opens in a new window. So give me one second and I will show you the window it opened in. And there we are. So this is the, the plat here. Uh, you can look at TIFFs or any other images, any other scans in Well Database in your browser. It comes in handy because honestly you don't want to download every file you run across. Sometimes it's nice just to look at them in the browser, see what you need to see, and then you can get out of it. So that's a, a, our image viewer. As you can see, you can zoom in, uh, zoom out. You can use this as a preview window to drag around. When you get into TIFF logs, very useful. Uh, so let me hop back over to our main screen. Okay, so here we go. Um, one other uh, icon, one other tab I want to point out is our user data tab. So our user data is your own user-defined types. You can add properties to any well you like as a premium user. Uh, this one I've already created uh, a property called product, and I've given this one a value of product C. If I come in here, I can add a text or a, a true false value, but I can come in and say a uh, say I want a a money value and I say a cost. And I can add this in. And then now every well and well database, I will be able to assign a cost to it. You know, if I were an EMP group, I'd like to know my cost. I could do easy, easy searches, heat maps, and things like that on the cost. If I'm a service company, I want to assign which wells I've I've done which products on, I can assign them here as well. And then I'll show you here in a second how we can filter on those items. Um, up top, you can create projects, you can stop or start watching them, you can run a report on this well if you'd like, but we'll uh, go ahead and close out our well details now so that we can look around at our other options we have. Uh, so we're right in the center of LaSalle County. I'm going to go into my tools and I'm going to go ahead and drop in another layer and that's the Texas Surveys and Abstracts. This is going to help me just get my bearings a little bit on what I'm looking at. And then we're going to go ahead and explore our other uh, lay well layer settings. So I can turn on my heat map just to give you an idea. It defaults to total wells. I'll go and drop it down to the cumulative oil. And then this uh, slider bar here will allow you to adjust the radius, which will help you fine tune your image uh, depending on which, how you want to see it. If you want to see them bleed together a little bit more, you can. If you want to uh, shorten them out, you can as well. Uh, same thing kind of goes for bubble here. If I click for bubble, it will stay on cumulative oil. And you'll be able to see a nice bubble map of the cumulative oil for what I'm searching for. These are all dynamic, so as I pan and zoom, move around, your bubbles and your heat will adjust to your current view. So your strongest heat will always be the highest producing well in your view. The colorized groups are the ones we're going to spend a little bit more time on because this is where we start to interact with our analytics. And uh, a lot of people find this very useful. 
So our color by will determine which colors that our wells are mapped to on our uh, spots on the map. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this down and choose operator. Now keep in mind, I've applied one filter. All I've applied was the filter of a first production date greater than 1-1-2011. And I've zoomed into a, a one specific area, and this is giving me the information for this area. All I have to do is pan, and this information will update. But uh, on this area alone, I have now blue icons, light blue. If I click Legend, it will give me the idea of uh, give me a, a list of the colors and the operators in my group by. Um, but I can also hover over any of these. So I see EP has 117 wells in this, and as I hover over it, it highlights both the production down below and the wells on the map side. I can see that Carrizo is 22, uh, Chesapeake 12, and so on and so forth. If I click on this uh, anywhere, I can get everything back to normal. All the colors will be there. Right here on our production map, uh, you can also ho hover over it and it'll give you the value for any month number. I'm on the type curve right now, which is a new feature to Well Database, so we can compare type curves for the operators in this area. Really quick, really easy way to compare how the different operators are performing against each other. I uh, give you some nice understanding of what what operators are doing. Uh, I can also flip it to monthly. It'll give me the monthly production numbers for every operator. I can view those both by the monthly, by the cumulative numbers. I can also take the cumulative numbers and take them to a per well, which gives me an average per well number, and I can see a little bit uh, another detail. I can also stack these instead and see how these stack up against each other. On the stack, sometimes I like to remove the log so you can see just how they all compare. So we'll remove it back to log take off the stack in the well, and we'll go back to a type curve, because the type curve is a nice way to compare how each one is, uh, each each operator is working. Right now we've got a good vintage, we've got a nice close area, it looks like a give or take five square miles, ten square miles max, um, and we can compare these operators, see who's performing the best. If we scroll down, um, before we go, the export allows you to export this chart or any of this data, uh, which will give you the operator and their production numbers. But if you export this, um, you can do that anytime here. And there's also an export to export the details I'll show you here in a minute. When we scroll down, we're given a tabular uh, table of all these items as well. So we, those same numbers we were looking at, 117 wells from EP and 22 from Carrizo. We can see them here. Um, from here, though, I, if I'm if something piques my interest and say this is my area of interest and I want to go ahead and pick these top five operators, I can click Map. And from here, it'll send those filters over to my current operator filter. So now I have five operators listed here. Cleans up my analytics a little bit. I can see how they all lay out to each other here. And then I can start maybe to back out a little bit. And I can see we're, we're obviously all in Eagleford Basin here, Eagleford uh, Formation. We've got about 10 square miles here. As we might even more, we can see uh, how each operator's position looks. So it looks like Chesapeake has 573, um, EP's got 480, Carrizo's 227. We're seeing their uh, type curves as well. We can see who peaks at the highest and who has the, the nicest curve at the end. Uh, do a nice operator comparison here, and quick and easy. Obviously took just two seconds to create that. Uh, from here, though, we can break this down by any number of items. Uh, every time we change our color, uh, it'll automatically flip us to another tab in the analytics. And so if I change to buy field, uh, then I can see that the Eagleville field versus the Briscoe Ranch field. I can take that and generate a type curve for each of those. It gives me the average, and I can see which, which curves look the most productive from a BOE, from oil, gas, etc. Uh, and so, again, if I want to just uh, dig down to the Eagleville field, I can do that. I can map that should show up here in my fields, it's the Eagleville, and there we go. So uh, we can color this, we can look at it multiple ways. Uh, we'll flip back to the operator. The second, uh, we do have a second and third grouping here that we can shape by, so we can go ahead and shape by the field, or by the uh, borehole, we'll try that because we are all in the, in the one field, and then we, will, uh, we can size it by cumulative oil as well. So now we should have a nice chart, a nice map of wells that are colored by operators, shaped by the uh, well bore type, and then sized by their production. Uh, all this is dynamic, so as I zoom in, I can just 
double click and things will start to fall in. You can easily see how the shapes compare to each other, how this horizontal well compares to this, uh, the eagle, the EP energy horizontals and so on and so forth. And so it's a real easy way just to dig in, to break apart the data, interact with it. Uh, find Most people find that as they dig in with data, they, you, know, you get more questions. And so our system allows you to dig in seamlessly and just jump into it. Um, from here, uh, what we've looked at, and you can go by state, by county, field, all across the top. Those are very straightforward. The final two are uh, production and type curve, and those are a little bit different. The production chart gives you a cumulative production chart for the wells that we're looking at. I'll hide away the water here, and now we're looking at the number of wells is the black curve, and then the oil and gas. Uh, so you can see a cumulative of everything that's going on in a particular area. So if you're researching an area rather than an operator or a, a field specifically, you can see the overall view. If I flip over to the type curve, this will give me a type curve of every well that we're looking at. So again, whenever you change out from looking at a specific operator or a field and just want to look at a general area, this is the way you can do it. So like most type curves, uh, as we get to the end here and we have fewer wells to work on, we get a little more of an erratic, uh, erratic uh, response. So we can zoom and change this and get a more smooth type curve from what we want to see. Um, and that leads into that, some of these other features that we have. Uh, if you'll notice here, we have a decline option. So if I click on decline, I can go ahead, and of course I'm on oil, I can open up our well database decline settings. So here we can generate a best fit, we can also choose exponential, harmonic, or hyperbolic, and if you do, you can assign a B value. We'll stick with best fit for this demo. Uh, if you want to dictate which month is your start month, what your initial rate can is, you can do that. Uh, for this demo, we'll just go ahead and forecast it out for 10 years or a minimum of 100 barrels a month. Um, I'll generate that, and there you go. Uh, as you see, our best fit's actually pretty solid as long as you uh, zoom into the relevant area and we can break it out. And it gives you the uh, information it used. So it picked a hyperbolic, a 0.79 repeating, and it gives you a forecast of each uh, of the wells production for the future dates. Um, you can do this for oil, you can do it for gas or water. Uh, if you Once you pick one and you, and you generate a decline, if you're happy with it, you can click on the dollar sign. The dollar sign will open up our basic economic package. Now, let me go ahead and say that this is a relatively new feature. We're looking on expounding upon this and uh, love to hear any feedback on how you want to see it. The reality is, is that economics packages can be extremely complicated and involved or they can be very basic and it runs the gamut between. We're trying to find the sweet spot based off of our user feedback on what you'd like to see. Uh, in here, we forecasted out the oil, and so you can see what's what's, gener what's been produced to date, and then our forecast production. We break that out with an EUR here, and then what's recovered to date and what's remaining. Below this, we can generate some basic economics based off of working interest, selling price, which uh, that's pretty pessimistic. Let's go to 47 because I believe today we, we're around there. Um, if you want to put an initial capital expense on uh, every well you drill, an operating expense, and then a tax rate. You can do that, and then it'll give us some basic numbers here. Our gross, our expenses, and our net, all based in our working interest numbers as well. So uh, that's a pretty scary picture. So we'll move on from there. But as you see, you get very quick and easy economics, and so if you're looking to get a quick general idea of what's going on in an area, you can generate this in a matter of minutes, and what you want. You can print this out, take it with you, do whatever, uh, do with it what you wish. Uh, and you can generate this for any oil, gas, water, anything you want to look at in our system. So uh, that's the uh, type curve and the production. Those are two separate ones. We've gone over all of the analytics tabs, and that's been a, we've looked at those really well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and back out a little bit here. And we touched on the user data filters. Uh, so um, I've created a user data filter uh, already called product that we saw on the other screen here. Uh, I'm going to reset. If I click reset, it'll reset all my filters back to nothing, and then it'll go back to uh, just everything that's on our screen. Uh, let me go ahead and change all my size buys and shape buys away. And so we're back to a normal map here. Um, my product is great. So I um, the well we looked at had a product C. 
Um, of course, this is not very specific, but this is my product that I looked at. And if I search this now, it gives me my product C that I was doing. So uh, let's see. If I'm a service company and I have product B, then I can search that. And this is going to give me wells that I've assigned that value to. So let me take a second to say that uh, offhand right now you have to go into every well and assign the value that you want it to have. But if you would like, you can send us a spreadsheet of API numbers and the value you want. And we'll, we'll see that into your account. Uh, in the very near future, you'll be able to upload that Excel document and do it yourself. Uh, but we'll be happy to do that for you now. But uh, say I'm a, a service company or something and I've uh, created a product and I've performed product B on all of these wells. Now I can get a nice in, uh, analytics based off of the products that I've done. If I'm, I can look down by operators, who are the operators that I've worked for, how are their wells performed versus the others. Uh, and then, you know, I can go back to product A and then I can see how those wells have done. So I have product B and I've seeded product A as well. Um, I can see the same thing, see those wells, see how they've done, break them down by operator, by well bore profile, by county, by any of these numbers. So it allows you to kind of get a, a deeper look into the uh, results of the wells and the projects that you've worked on. Uh, so many service companies do the well, uh, do the projects, but then never are able to really follow up and, and determine how well their, uh, their products are performed. So from both an R&D perspective, from a sales perspective, this is very helpful. Uh, what we haven't opened up yet is this list view. So now we have a list view of these wells, and we can click on any one of these and look at the de well details, just like we did in the others. Um, but from the well detail, from the well list page, we can do a couple other things. Number one, and probably one of the most uh, popular topics, we can export data. So in our export, it allows you to come in and you can select your data types that you want to export. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these. And as you can see, just about everything we have in Well Database is exportable. Well headers, permits, production, our summary data completions, even directional surveys where they're available, the FRAC data, history. So you can export net almost everything out of our system. And again, um, one thing that I hadn't, haven't really said, but our uh, usage requirements. Uh, we have no purge clause in our system. So if you export this data and then you decide to leave Well Database, well, the data is yours to keep. There's no requirement for you to uh, remove that data at all. So it's one of our uh, ideals that we Well Database, if this is public data, we are putting it together and giving it a useful format. But at the end of the day, it's public data. It's not our data. So we'll give it to you, as it were. Um, I can pick any any of my data types I'd like here. So I'm going to pick well uh, headers. I'm going to click permits, production, and we'll go ahead and uh, get the FRAC data as well. So when I click next, it allows me to select the attributes I want. Uh, I can get any, pick and choose what I like from APIs, lat longs, states, operators, any of those. I can just click add all as well. And then I click next, you see we moved on to the permits. Uh, I can get the IDs, the dates, uh, again, very much everything we have in our system. So for this purpose, I'm going to go ahead and add all on these and then come to the production. I'm going to add all there as well. Um, frac information, why not? We'll get that as well. So we'll kick that off. Uh, right now, you can just export to CSV in Excel. Uh, it's been our, our feedback has told us that the CSV goes into just about any uh, production uh, application you need, and um, Excel documents give you a nice way to dig into the data. So that's what we have now, direct imports into Aries, PhD, Win, Petra. Those are coming down the pipeline, but with the CSV, you'll be able to accomplish it, most of that. Our exports are fairly big in a lot of cases, and so we kick them off in the background. So it kicked off and it's running, and I can now use Well Database, keep doing what I want. And here at some point in the demo, you'll see a pop up saying that your export is ready to download. When that happens, we can download it, and it's just a CSV of all the file, the data we asked for. So it's a, um, we limit it to 10,000 wells right now, uh, and it's really solely based off of the time it takes to generate that file for you. We don't want this to run for days. Uh, if you are looking for larger amounts of data, we do uh, provide custom exports to anyone who needs them. In the custom exports, you define the data type, the, the format, and how you want it delivered and what frequency, and we generate that for you. Um, so please give me a, a shoot us a message and let us know if that's something you're interested in. We can help you with that. Um, one other item you can do from the list is you can generate a project. And well database projects are very simple yet very powerful uh, items that you can do. So all you have to do is click the wells that you want and you can click add project. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a project just in the, in the sake of time here. I'm going to go back to my projects, and I have an Eagleford project already here that I can show you. Um, in the Eagleford project, uh, you'll see that we have a description and an owner and a, a nice list of items. Um, this gives us a, a running tally of activity going on on this project. So if you've got three or four users, you can keep track of who is doing what on the project. There's a discussion board, uh, surprisingly popular. If you want to hop in and make a note on the project, you can do this. You can discuss options. It keeps a nice history of what's going on. The wells will show you every well on this project. So this is an Eagleford project with several wells on it with a few little bit of information about each one. You click on any of those, jump you straight to the well details. It's quick and easy to get into. Uh, the wells in general, you can uh, your target wells, whether you're a service company that's providing a project on these wells or an EMP group that's got a least acreage and these are your wells that are producing. In the case of that, uh, that these are your wells that are producing, you go to the production tab, they will give you your production numbers for the wells that you have in here. Same thing with the type curve. You can generate a type curve just like you can in other places in well database, um, and it will run that for you. Uh, under the searches, a, any number of searches, and while I showed you earlier, um, there was a button for saving the searches. You can save them to a project, and then uh, this works really well if you have a lease acreage where you have wells, and then you want to do a search of the offset acreage, a search of the formations in the area, a search of the operator. You can load those all in here and quick access to it. And then there's also a files. So you see under wells, every well has a uh, essentially a folder here where you can drop files in. So you can organize your data really easily if you've got lease documents, drilling reports, logs. You just drop them into the well, and then everyone who has access to this project can do it. So many groups are using email and servers and, and just dropping files in here and there. And this is a nice way to organize them to the well or to the project that you're working on. And then the admin at the bottom just allows you to add users. You can define who has what type of permissions, who can get in and who can do what. Uh, one thing I should note as well is that if you do add a user by email address that is not a well database user, they will actually get in and see this. They will be able to view your general, view your discussion, uh, and view your files. They just will not be able to get the details unless they actually create an account. So it's still good for sharing with people even outside of your network as a replacement for, say, a data room or a way of delivering your products from a service company. Uh, so I'm going to get back into the uh, web browser here. Uh, one thing I will point out is that every time you come back, your search settings, your area of interest, your analytics are all saved, and uh, uh, they will pull up every time for you. Um, we don't have many... LAS logs in here, so I've already pulled up a log from North Dakota where we do provide that. The logs are just like in our other documents, they are unlimited. And so if you uh, need any logs out of Well Database, you can download them and there's no usage restrictions on what you can do with them. This is our LAS viewer, so I opened up a, a, a log from North Dakota. Uh, it's a super nice, quick and easy viewer, a drag and drop. I can grab any curve I want, drag it to a new track. Uh, it'll give me some options for generating the track, my grids, I can apply those. Um, I can generate any kind of settings from fill colors, strokes. Uh, as a lot of you who deal with LAS data know that sometimes it can be a kind of a pain in the butt to get a viewer that's easy to use, and it's all built in the Well database. So your one subscription fee pays for all of this, and you can access it, upload your own LAS files if you need, zoom in and out, add tracks. We can view the header information if we want, or we can view the raw data as well. So um, it's a nice feature that we've thrown in with Well Database. Uh, before we finish up here, I'm going to point out a couple other features that we have. Uh, we do have a mobile apps. Uh, we have both in the Apple App Store and in the Android uh, Google Play Store. Uh, they're native apps that work fantastic on the go. They are uh, optimized for this type of a uh, for mobile. Uh, traffic on and every piece of our database is available in the mobile apps. Uh, but and like I touched on earlier, we do do custom export services where you define what data you want to get and on what schedule you want to get it for you, and we'll generate that and send it to you on a regular basis. Um, again, the 
package we've looked at today has been the premium package, $250 a month a user. Uh, we offer discounts for annual agreements, and we also offer discounts for users starting at five and more users. So if you have a, a specific need or something like that, shoot us a message. We'll give you a price. We'll give you a, a great deal on what we're doing, and honestly, we're trying to save you money uh, with the oil prices where they are. I think we could all use to save a little bit of money. So that's about it for the demo. We've wrapped up. We've touched all the pieces of everything we have. Again, I thank you guys so much for coming in.